Oh, and welcome to another episode of Music, Philosophy, and More. Tonight, I am excited to say that uh, I have an old high school friend with me to uh, share some stories and, uh, and life experiences with, James Behan Jr. Welcome. Thanks, John Henry. And hello, everybody. It's great to, to be on the Music, Philosophy, and More podcast with you. All right. Yeah, I, I appreciate you uh, taking the time and uh, hanging out with us tonight. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm very excited. Sometimes, uh, you know, I like to start off by just kind of uh, touching base on where we met. You know, it might be fun for the audience to know what that is. Um, what, what would your memory be of how we met? Um, our, well, my memory of you, of when we met, would have been um, my freshman year at James Madison High School in Brooklyn. Um, I encountered you or I first saw you that spring of my eighth grade. So we're talking 1996. Um, I had kind of already decided I was going to be a James Madison High School Golden Knight. And uh, one of the reasons was that Mr. Rams was our band director at Marine Park, my junior high school. And he invited those of us who were going to be coming to Madison anyway to why don't you come to the spring concert? And uh, when it was jazz band time, um, and I believe that was like Mike Perlman's senior concert. So it was like Mike Perlman behind the drums and you and Jeremy uh, and Dave Evans, I think was the other auxiliary percussionist slash drummer. If I'm not mistaken, it was like the dueling drum sets. Um, oh, wow. So that was that opportunity of like watching y'all do your thing and seeing you shredding on the guitar and saying, wow, that guy's pretty cool. And then, um, being a drummer myself, it would have been kind of that start of September being in jazz band. And uh, as you as a guitarist and me as a drummer sitting next to each other. Mm -hmm. um, and I, th I would have think the long hair might have been a bit um, of for me, like I need to approach cautiously. But uh, once we started chatting and mm -hmm. finding common ground, to uh to talk about and 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 most importantly we had the common language of music um mm -hmm. that that was that was really uh where we developed deeper friendship and relationship and even more so um being part of the sing program when um mm -hmm. when our common friend jason hills of who bladed happy birthday to right. um it wanted invited me to be a part of the the sing band that was kind of the big moment of us getting to work together and get to know each other even more um those are some of those those first impressions of of really being astounded in a very good way uh of your talent of of you know listening to music all my life i've heard amazing guitarists and then to have like an amazing guitarist to my right was was kind of an was an awesome experience. So those are those are some of those uh, initial. Uh, probably would have been earlier than would have been the the spring musical when we were all in the pit together, and that was kind of. I think those are always magical times uh, of being doing music and being in events like that, like being in a part of a show or being in a part of a pit band where there's all of that free time, um, where actors and set people are getting themselves ready and you just have that time to just goof around and 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 uh, really develop friendships and make the inside jokes that last lifetimes yeah yeah man wow you brought up a, a lot of you know a lot of memories for me so yeah i do remember now that you were two years uh behind me right in terms yeah. of age right correct correct and then uh um yeah then you were playing drums in the band and i was like oh man this guy's uh this, this guy is pretty bright, you know, he got a bright spirit and, uh, Thank you. and he's just like, he's really doing his best to, to play the part that the drums are called to play. And one thing that really stood out to me about you was how uh, conscious you were of how loud you were hitting the drums, you know, like you just didn't want to overdo it. I'm, I'm sure you, you have this hand power to, to bash it if you wanted to, but you didn't just go with that as your default. Um, and I guess that might be for various reasons. I, I don't know your, your musical background or drums in your house, whatever it was, but you were just really aware of this, always aware of the song, always aware of what the song needed. And 
I thought that was really cool. And that you could do what was required. And if you couldn't, you went and practice. You're like, oh, I'm, not, I'm just going to work on that part. I remember that attitude of like bringing your best game forward. And I was, that was always impressed me. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, I, th well, I guess that's probably a lot of the perfectionist. Uh, maybe it's a negative trait, but of, of just wanting to do it right, like to, to read what was on the page and, and if the page called for it. Um, I also, you know, I think, I hope that it's part of what the best thing about music is, is that that dialogue and that relationship of like, of, of like any good conversation of, of being able to be uh, intuitive and perceptive of what that situation needs. You know, I think some of the other things, as you were talking about that, the other thing that um, struck me of our early time and continuing throughout life is just how effortless you playing guitar was. It just, where at times for me, playing a beat or playing a, a rhythm or whatever rhythm was on the page, that was okay because there were the notes that were there and I could follow the notes and I could do that. It was when you had the slash lines of a fill where it's like, <laughs> okay, okay, I think I could, I think I could do this. I think, but, 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 but back on one, back get, get that <laughs> steady downbeat because, because that's important. Otherwise, you know, being the pacemaker for the band um, mm -hmm. any, or any ensemble, just make sure you have that, that steady one downbeat. But I always found, and I've always appreciated when we've worked together of how effortless it seems like your fingers on a guitar fretboard are uh, of just going up and down and and fast or slow or whatever it was just of, of how effortless that that has been uh, i appreciate that yeah it's, it's always fun to hear insight or insight or feedback from fellow musicians as to you know what i come across as as an instrumentalist because i don't know right you know so that's it's cool i appreciate that oh you're very welcome um, so I'd like to say a shout out to those who are watching. We have a couple of people watching live. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm sure you guys are here for James. Uh, so I appreciate that. And feel free to send any uh, comments that you have or questions or, you know, hit that like button, love button, uh, heart button, and, uh, and let's hang out together for a while. So, um, so James, I'm going to ask you some questions about your wife. Sure. So... Uh, <clears throat> Here we go. So can you remember what it was that got you into enjoying music in the first place? What were some of your earliest inspirations? I feel, uh, I think I came out of the womb with a beat and, you know, a song in my head and my heart. Um, I was really, really lucky to just be immersed in music. Uh, my mom growing up was the most amazing singer I knew um, cause she had a very pretty voice and still does. And, uh, she played guitar, uh, and, and growing up, she was a drummer in, in the drum and bugle corps, uh, in their neighborhood. And my dad's gift musically to me was his, his taste in music. He was a master record spinner. Uh, you know, he was DJ dad before I knew what a DJ was of just having that music collection and that exposure to all of these different types of music. And, not only my parents, but my my extended family, my my aunt, my uncles and aunts, uh, who just came from musical families. Um, my my one of uncle on my mom's side uh, was into recording, uh, working at a recording studio in Staten Island, and and always being involved. Like he was the technical music guy with all of the microphones and wires and computers and keyboards and synthesizers, and that was. That was awesome. And most of my dad's family was musical by continuing with drum and bugle corps um, with touring companies. And, and there was always some sort of music being played or spoken about or sung, whether sung well or sung loudly, just sung around. Uh, so I just, I just remember growing up around music and music was a part of waking up to a song of most of my day having a song in my head of at nighttime having dinner with the family. There was always like some sort of soundtrack. Uh, my, my dad, that was where my dad's contribution was of spinning some sort of CD uh, and heading to bed with a song. And then, uh, so yeah, I would say, especially growing up, just music was, was everywhere. 
music was everywhere. And it was even at church, which is a, a, my Catholic faith and spirituality is a significant part of who I am and what I've done and what I do and what I continue to do. So I was always around choirs um, with my mom being a part of them and then myself being a part of it. Um, it's just music everywhere and so when it was time to be able to take piano lessons in third grade or second and third grade I did something like that second third fourth and fifth grade um and then when it was time to be in junior high and be part of band that was I was aching I remember being in fifth grade and so nervous that I was going to fail the music test because that was what I wanted that was where I wanted to be and what I wanted to do and, and then just uh, that, that relief of like, okay, my thing at junior high is going to be music and I could do that really well. Um, so that's kind of uh, that early, the roots of where the road of music started. Wow. That's fun. It's fun to hear that it, each person, you know, has got their own unique journey. Um, by the way, someone saying, hi, uh, Mr. Behan, did you Burn your thumb in a forming grill. Tell Stanley, <laughs> tell Stanley hi. One of the most talented people I know, not Stanley James. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, so thank you. Mr. Behan, that's my good friend, Mr. Walters, a, a good, uh, one of my closest friends from college and uh, a groomsman in my wedding and, and uh, a brother from another mother. I, I sliced my thumb on uh, closing a gate, a church gate earlier this week. That's the long story short. Probably should have filed a workman's comp, but no <laughs> stitches. All right. Hi, Jimmy. Yeah, nice. Um, so, yeah, that, that um, I guess we're going to be putting in the uh, memory lane portion in between questions since um, I don't have any specific question about it. But when you tell me about your love for music and waking up singing, and I do remember a few things like uh, that. Uh, I remember on a bus trip, I guess it was a parade that we did. Uh, you, I think, sang all the lyrics to American Pie or something by heart. Does that sound familiar? Sounds familiar. I think it was yeah. Staten Island. I think I remember it was Staten Island. That's a nice long bus trip. You could sing the whole thing <laughs> a couple of times. Right. And I remember, for me, that that was unique. You were unique for a few reasons. Uh, like I said, as a drummer, you were not smashing it. You are really conscious of the song. And uh, also that you knew lyrics so much. I never met a drummer who sang any lyrics. <laughs> so that, that was also, and then that makes sense because later on it ties into you being able to write your own songs and, and play guitar too. And, and be mainly because you love singing. That I guess that's why you were so attached to lyrics, I would guess. Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, before I, I played drums, I, was, I had learned piano. Mm -hmm. um so that was so there was already um there was already that that component um so that yeah i i, I think that might have been just learning a song uh that i, I kind of remember being in a big american pie kick uh, <laughs> at one point in time like just wanted to learn all the words to it it comes in handy when when you're going to karaoke yeah i bet it does <laughs> um, so Robert Ramza chimed in and said, you scored 100 on your sixth grade theory test to pick your instrument. And then he writes that, that, that a drummer, <laughs> like, like really, if you're going to get a hundred, you know, but, uh, Hey, you know, Robert Ramza, I think it was a great choice on James's part because he was a very musical drummer and, and the world needs that <laughs> yeah. as far as, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I um, was thinking about that too. John Henry and Mr. Rams, hi. Uh, thanks for watching. I, I, I was thinking about that today of why, why, I, why I felt more attached. Well, I know at first I really was wanted to be a drummer because my mom was a drummer. So I figured there was something in the, in the cake already, baked in the cake of, of having a tendency to, to be a drummer. Um, and for whatever reason, in high school, I, I did beginning band a bunch of times just to fiddle around with different instruments. And that was, I think, something so amazing about being at Madison and having so many music classes was that ability to try different instruments. And, and for whatever reason, I, I probably could have practiced a whole lot more, but it just felt comfortable being a drummer. There was something about the, maybe it was just the, the feel, the, the, I'll say artistry of figuring out rudiments and, and of the, 
maybe the mathematic component of of just moving the the the, the time along that just felt simple and then one when once i was able to play the drum set while there was just something kind of neat about being able to play different instruments at the same time like use my hands and my feet all at the same time mm -hmm. um in a way to make music that was i'm i'm <laughs> I'm a multitasker. I don't know if I multitask well, but it just seems to fit my personality of kind of being able to do like a little bit of everything. And so mm -hmm. that's where the drums really hit and fit really well. Mm -hmm. um, so. Wow. And then we got, it. yeah, you, you, you've magnetized some, uh, some excellent audience members here. Uh, Rebecca Wallow Rose just said, <laughs> hey. and an excellent singer. You were wonderful in show chorus. I remember you learning the choreography. It wasn't easy for you when you worked so hard to master the steps. I remember you'll be in my heart from Tarzan most clearly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thanks, thanks for watching, I, Rebecca. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. It's great to see you, Miss Walla Rose. Uh, and yeah, yeah, I do. I do recall. Um, I can't ever say that I was a triple threat. I could. I felt like I was a very good singer when it came time for the theater part of, of high school and even later on in life, I, I felt like I'm a decent actor. But then when it came time for dancing, that is not my strongest suit. Um, but that's where the hard work comes in about kind of plugging away and, and then converting it, translating it from taking dance steps into almost like drum music where there's all these different places and, you know, uh, maybe I was doing Dance Dance Revolution in my head before it was a video game um, <laughs> of kind of like con converting it in my head of how, how what, what language do I know? And then how can I turn that dancing into something that I know? And it's more of a feel. Um, I know I can be a bit rigid at times, but, uh, <laughs> but that's the case. Uh, awesome, but yeah, you'll be my heart. So good. That was that. Those were show course was a lot of fun. Being able to get to do a lot of fun things. Hmm. Um, and just, just I don't have a well. I know I we do have a question about this, so we'll get to that. So moving on, what were some of your favorite bands and artists growing up? Sure. Um, I grew up on a steady diet, being growing up in New York City of Billy Joel and Elton John and uh, James Taylor. And uh, early, early days, I remember my mom's influences too of like Ken, uh, Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton and uh, Neil Diamond and um, listening to the Catholic folk music of the 60s and 70s uh, in our house, um, the songs that my mom would have sang to her um, catechism students. Um, and kind of whatever was was on the radio um but more more so than anything i kind of remember that steady diet of growing up of of billy joel and elton john and and james taylor and chicago as well chicago my was my my, my dad and my, was my, my mom and dad's band like the the when we it's one of those you know being a a kid and and kind of you have that parent kid relationship of parents to parents and we're kids and at some point in time they shed their coolness um mm -hmm. but for for my parents like their band that they went to as as teenagers and as 20 somethings was chicago and so like when 25 or six to four or make me smile or uh anybody know what time it is became up on the jazz band i was like i got this <laughs> i got this in my head and in my heart like i'm i'm good i'm good um so awesome. those are a whole bunch of of the the bands i grew up listening to and uh, I've, it kind of translated down the road of, I remember uh, in my college, one of my very good mentors, when I would sing on, on Sunday mass, he came up to me and brother Mike said, I don't know if anybody's ever told you this, but you sound a lot like James Taylor. And I was like, James Taylor? He's like, I don't know if you know who James Taylor is. I said, oh, I know. <laughs> and that's like one of the highest compliments you could ever say. So thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, so that was, that was a, uh, those were that was what was on in the house a lot. Mm -hmm. that, that that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I, I could connect with several of those. And by the way, uh, Rebecca Walla Rose said, uh, 
and trips to New- upstate New York, I guess that was that a thing the show course did too? That was, yeah. Yeah, that would have been after you had graduated from, from Madison, um, mm. right? That was just, it was just for me, my senior year, but uh, okay. for for the years afterwards, it was it was an annual trip up to uh, to her hometown of Thousand Islands, New York, and of Clayton, New York, which is just, oh, wow. it's, go- it's God's country. It's gorgeous. <laughs> Um, and really a new experience for so many of us that grew up in Brooklyn Mm -hmm. of to see mountains and hills and air and and lakes and water and and people that uh, were just great people Mm -hmm. oh yeah that's so valuable to get a chance to travel especially in high school era to nature you know with people that you know with with a good group of people you know that's really amazing um yeah, fun trips, says Mr. Rams. So in terms of the bands, the, the artists you grew up, uh, I could definitely relate with the Billy Joel. My mom was playing Billy Joel records. Elton John was there in the periphery. Uh, I also remember Cindy Lauper being on. Definitely, mm-hmm. my mom had James Taylor. Uh, Jim Croce was big in our house. Oh, yeah, same here. Simon and Garfunkel. Same here, yeah. Um, Carol King, Carly Simon, things like that. I remember a little bit of... Uh, who did you say there uh, before Neil Diamond? Um, okay, Kenny Rogers, Rogers and Dolly yeah, Parton. Dolly Dolly Park, Park, yeah, yeah, a little bit of those, Bonnie Raitt, things like that. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So anyway, uh, moving on. So when did you start listening to music? Did you ever like start and say, I'm going to listen to music on my own now? Or it was just kind of like never even began, just was yeah, I, from the beginning? I, I think, well, I think it was kind of like that teenage time where there were very clearly, I can kind of clearly remember a very distinct line of my parents saying, why would you listen to that stuff was, was when grunge came out Mm -hmm. of like of Nirvana. When my cousin, I have cousins that are like five or so years older, five to seven years older. And so what they were listening to, well, they were listening to like the, the heavy heavy stuff of biohazard they were watching biohazard when they were just growing getting big in brooklyn in the in the clubs um so they were dealing with metal that wasn't quite my my speed but uh, but i remember kind of the grunge of of nirvana of of the punk of of green day that though it was kind of the um the the measuring stick of of this is the music for the kids um so that was, I remember being, feeling like such a big shot when I had gotten the, the Green Day Dookie album that that was mm-hmm. like, this is mine and I could listen to this and I can't. And then when I put the, the CD on and put my headphones on and I was like, what? <laughs> I'm hearing these words. Okay, I know not to play that one out loud. All right. I, play, I know which, I knew which, which, which tracks to skip if I was going to play them out loud. Um, <laughs> but, and then I think a significant um turning point or um musical influence in my life that i claimed as my own in my family is is the dave matthews band um i am being a child of the late 90s um you know uh, catching them right on that meteor ascension into superstardom um and it's kind of shaped a great deal of who i am of of my musical influence uh of how i can look at the music i've taken part in in the past and and the way that I continue to see music nowadays that there's I've, it's that's my band that's my mm-hmm. my my band and um and then it, then it's kind of just especially it was great to be a singer songwriter in the heyday of the singer songwriters in the 2000s of like your of Dave Matthews but of John Mayer and Jason Mraz and 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 you know other guys like Howie Day and Josh Kelly and uh and other uh other songwriters like that um Mm -hmm. it was very helpful to be a guy who could play guitar in the 2000s because you you just learned a bunch of good songs and you were and you were set right well yeah i i do uh because i recently checked your facebook profile a little more deeply and i did see the dave matthews band stuff and i was like oh yeah i do remember you were a dave matthews band fan yeah um yeah, me too, but it wasn't, uh, they were never like my band. I did see them a few times and I uh, listened to them a lot for a period, you know, um, pretty amazing musicians for sure. Right. And I could hear that with y'all with Modus Tolens. 
mm-hmm. when y'all like that was having your saxophonist and and you with the skills that you had on guitar and and Dave's ability to play the drums and Jeremy's bass like you were a fiddle away from being the Brooklyn version of the Dave Matthews band mm-hmm. in my eyes and in my ears like that was that was very very clear if only Jason had learned fiddle then <laughs> then you would have had your, your Dave Matthews band right there yeah I appreciate that um yeah we, we we definitely that's what happened it was like the one band we could all Jeremy Dave and me could agree on was Dave Matthews because we all had pretty different tastes but sure. Dave Matthews we kind of felt like all right and then the challenge of like hey let's try adding a sax let's try adding what with keys and, and Jason did bring trumpet not the fiddle but right trumpet. that's true you know and uh and then a singer um so we were at one we started as a three piece and we fattened to a six piece by the end of it. Uh, but yeah, we, we, we worked hard. We practiced a lot and uh, it was fun. It was a fun time. Yeah. Which is actually, it's funny that you mentioned that because that's the current lineup of, of the Dave Matthews band that's on, on tour right now is a, is the guitarist, uh, bassist, drummer, keyboard player, saxophonist and trumpet. Oh, really? So you were ahead of your time, come to think of it. Right. Maybe they heard some of the old tapes. And like, That's what it is. We gotta... I, I, they must have seen something on, on <laughs> Facebook about y'all. That was probably what happened. Yeah, uh, cool. So um, how would you describe the influence? Uh, well, sorry, on a side note, I just have to mention, today I was doing uh, putting VHS cassette digitizing with this sure. fair, little bit weird way but I figured out how to do it. And um, I, I had one Modus Tolan's live concert on a VHS. Awesome. It was our first show at Christie's Pub on Flappish Avenue, February, yeah. two, February 2000. And it was just the three of us. And it's ridiculously long. It's like a two hour <laughs> video. Wow. Just, I'm like, you know, digitizing. I'm like, this thing is long. And we had a comedian, uh, you know, in, intermission. I didn't listen to it yet. It was just like putting it into the computer, but whatever. It's fun to have. I'll post it. Uh, yeah, on YouTube well, that'd be awesome to see. <laughs> um, so, how would you describe the influence music has had on your life in general? Uh, I think I would hope that that among the the significant aspects of my personality that they know that music is a, is a is a part of who I am and what I do you know of 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 the people know especially people who I work with know the gifts that I have with music and that I use them um, throughout my career that's been part of my my job I've been paid to be a music minister for a very long time and and um, so people are I I'm able to communicate that way um you know as i've tried to frame myself as a storyteller uh that i've been able to use music to do that as well um i can you know it's almost something i could say i could put on 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 a resume that i'm fluent in music i think that that's how how important it is uh and it's and it's neat to to share that with my wife allison and with our daughters and to see them um, learn and figure out music and, and, and soak that up the ways that they can, as I'm sure you experience with, with your son, uh, mm-hmm. and with your wife as well, the way that you, that music is a language inside our house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can you imagine being in, in a family that, uh, doesn't have like a mutual appreciation for music? No, no, that would have been very, very challenging. That would have been very challenging. It, you know, it is just, admittedly too. It's it's uh it's wild. Like I, there are times when I just like want to play my guitar f- just for either stress relief or to be expressive. And and uh, my daughters see it at this point in time as me not paying attention to them. So mm-hmm. it's very challenging to play the guitar at home right now because mm-hmm. when I'm able to, it should be the time where I'm being a dad and, and being present to my daughters. Um, I'm trying to get to the point where I learn their songs and can find it on the tabs and how to play the chords. So that way I can still be kind of cool to play along with BTS or with uh, the Descendants or whatever uh, music is cool at the time. Um, 
but yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's part of, of a significant part of who I am and, and, and what I'm about and, and uh, my personality and that what people would know about me is, is that he's a musical guy. He likes music and does music <laughs> too. Right. Right. Cool. And would you say, I'm just, it's like a side question that yeah. would you say it's like saved your life in any way? I think many musicians might say something along those lines. I would probably, but yeah. Yeah. Saved it. I, I I think saved in the sense of um, it's helped define my mm-hmm. life and, and what's important about it. Um, it's, it's always helped inform significant decisions in my life. Right, right. Um, so you had something to tether yourself to in a way or like uh, to right. ground yourself with. Right, right. And it's not, um, I, I'll even say it this way, of, of some major moments in my life. Um, and it's not always that you that you do like the we, we call it Bible roulette of like when you go to open up the Bible and you like fan it out to a specific page and you put your finger on a specific section and a verse and that's what God's supposed to be telling you. Um, but it's almost like uh, that there's a way of opening up a song or just putting a song on the radio and and allowing that the paying attention to the lyrics of the song and knowing that you could be listening to this song for a specific reason. Um, for example, um, last week, I, I kind of posted this on Facebook, but I listened to Stevie Wonder's song, As. And if you haven't listened to it yet, uh, folks, you, you really should. It's amazing. Or listen to it again if you haven't. Um, it's this seven-minute jazzy tune. And all of a sudden, in the middle, he breaks into this, this like, church. He's Stevie Wonder sounding like a preacher with, like, sometimes in life we have our troubles, in times life cares and troubles we might be wishing that we weren't in this time and space but that god knew exactly where he wanted you and put you in this place and it's just like it was a particular moment of of questioning and and, and wondering about life and and um so it's something like that like music saving in the sense of informing me uh through i'll, I'll say the word the holy spirit um kind of like stirring inside of me like this is this is what you need to hear right now and to put you on the right path. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, like you said, it's a language, right? It's a language yeah. all its own. It uh, activates parts of our human frame, our human uh, essence that, uh, you know, only, only music can perhaps right. at, at times. Uh, so, <clears throat> well, I think you just kind of did, but uh, if there's anything to add to it, can you say a little bit about the power of music in general, not not just the way it affects you, but music itself, uh, like what it has to offer for for the world at large. Sure, I th- I think I think what that's something. It's it's a universal language. I think that that's something that's so beautiful about it. Is is we might not always be able to tell the the markings on a sheet of music in terms of the language of the title or uh, the expression, the articulation expressions that people use. But for the most part, we get when those dots are on those five lines that depending on the clef, you know, we use our gifts and our talents to, to read it that right way that we can, we can understand that everybody can sit and understand and read this together. Either we've spent years together or if uh, you just sit in in a jam session um, that everybody has this, I think that that's one of those gifts of, of music being able to be a universal language. Um, and it's a, a language that the, that the world understands. Um, you know, I think of things like, regardless of something of like, think of like New Year's Day, New Year's Eve night in Times Square, where more often than not, like every year the, the confetti falls and they start playing John Lennon's Imagine, where there's that sense of where even people, if they don't know the English words, they probably know the piano chord part in their head enough to know that that's that song. And if they know the translation to it, they know that this is this, this song of a hopeful world. Um, and, and that's something that, that can be communicated. Um, it's funny. Here's... We're, we're kind of, it all ties and connects with knife. Um, 
I watch with my girls the the cartoon show Bluey. Uh, and I don't know if 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 you don't, it's amazing. One of the cool things about Bluey is that they incorporate classical music into it. Um, so if you know if you know classical music, like all of a sudden you'll watch Bluey and you'll be like, oh, that's Beethoven. Or, oh, that's I know that one. And they had an episode that they had Holst's Jupiter. Uh, and and knowing Mr. Rams taught us a lot about Gustav Holst uh, and about the planets and 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 so much so that I used uh, the middle section of Jupiter at my wedding because it, it, they there's a church hymn that's set to that setting um, and there it was in this in this cartoon and it was just that the ability of not only to save the world but connect the world throughout time of of these moments of these the ways that that it all interconnects. I think that that's something that's so beautiful about music is that it it's a unifying language. And it's also, I, I think, a language of God, of however we identify God. Like it's a way that it speaks to our common hearts. Um, even what you have in the back about uh, what our, our hearts all share a common beat. Um, mm -hmm. Some may be irregular, some might not be. Mm -hmm. But uh, regardless of how we view the world, and however we view our faith or our spirituality, um, that music is is a language of faith and spirituality as well. I believe you know that that, and when we when we're able to use that music to to share who we are and whose we are, um, that that is something that that's kind of special and important, and and um, that reaches beyond exactly how we identify a divine creator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and host does you. rock. Yeah, Holst rocks. Oh, cool. So you see the Facebook too. I do, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, uh, so, yeah, on, on, on that note, I just want to add in. So I'm working on a, a book right now. Um, I wrote a book a while back called um, Music for Health. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm doing a second edition, which turned into this thing, which is not a second edition. It's a whole other book. And um, it's called Mind Your Music. And basically the concept is... Uh, Music is super powerful, so be very careful uh, what kind of music you're listening to. You know, so I divide it into uh, unhealthy, gray area, and healthy music. And uh, of course, we all determine that for ourselves. But to just be aware that there is that that spectrum. And um, yeah. <clears throat> I did in the healthy music portion. I do uh, talk about this experience I had singing in a church choir. It was a Catholic church and. Beth Beach, I don't know, 2007 or eight. And uh, I was just, I stopped in the church on the way home from work. I was just inspired. And uh, they were looking for a member of the choir to do um, the Hallelujah Chorus on, on uh, Midnight Mass. Yeah. And I, and I just volunteered. I said, you know what, I'll, I'll be an extra guy. And I practice yeah. for the month or whatever. And yeah, that was just a very beautiful experience singing there, especially that night because people had brought a lot of faith to it. And even though I don't identify as a Catholic now, and I may not have even at that time, uh, I've been practicing Buddhism for since 2009 actively. Right. I, I cannot deny the health of that music. It was just really meant to uplift, inspire, uh, inspire faith in humanity, in, in our, in our uh, common brotherhood, you know? Sure. And the glory of, of existence. Sure. And um, I saw, I put that, anecdote in the book uh as a example of healthy music so i could definitely relate to the how music through your church experience um the, that your church experience made music that much more powerful for you sure i also i grew up in a catholic church i think the same one as you did you attend saint I thomas so. growing up yes yeah. yeah yeah we were both yeah saint thomas yeah, so, and as kids right yes yeah. so i grew up uh, in saint thomas church i later attended saint columba a bit but um, yeah, I, I would sing. A lot of the people around me weren't singing, but I wanted to sing because I just thought music was was important, you know. Right. And that, that it was in a way a test of my faith to vocalize, you know, in, in yeah. front of others in, in that setting. Yeah. And, and that that helped me learn how to read music more by singing in church because you you see the notes, you know. Right. And uh, yeah. I think people who don't have that experience may not be as keyed into the to reading music or to to the words or something yeah i, I so i i think that i do want to i'm curious too about you john henry about 
the role that music's played in the course of your spirituality journey too. Like in the course of going from one, identifying as one faith to another, but the constancy of the music that's been there. But at the same time, I think regardless of who or how we identify our spiritualities, um, well, I'll say, I say, I use the term God, but we'll, we'll use even the idea of a divine creator, that that's kind of common, that the ability for those of us who have musical gifts, um, that that is part of developing that relationship with our divine creator, developing that relationship with God is that, that, that God's planted these gifts in our hearts and in our minds and in our abilities um, so that we could develop our relationship with God um, and then also build up the relationship we have with others through sharing those gifts. You know, I think, I think you're a great example of regardless of, of, of throughout your faith journey, you've, you've used music to share your gifts with people. Um, even what you just said, you know, being at St. Thomas or at St. Columba and, and that you couldn't help but sing like that's, 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 that part of that relationship with your divine, with God or the divine creator of like, you can't help but, but share that, that with you. And then also you doing what you do and sharing music with other people helps to bring people in touch with however they identify God, because they have this, this language that we could all share together. I think that that's, um, I think that that's something that's, that's, so, that there's just a thought that came to my mind too, about like, I, whenever I, I lead, um, a lot of times I, I do, I, I lead teaching uh, catechists here, or I do, um, I do wedding preparation now, marriage preparation for couples here in New Orleans. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm always bringing my guitar with me because one, we need music and I don't want it canned. Uh, mm -hmm. If I can, if I could sing and play, maybe it's a bit, uh, egocentric but i just like i know i can do this I, this is i know i can bring this and i can make it a little different than if somebody was just pressing play on a, on a cd um, and i always used i remember being growing up and going to the great irish fair uh in coney island and there was one time there was this like tea towel and it said if you can sing well sing loud so you can thank god for what he gave you and if you can't sing well sing louder to remind god of what he forgot to give you so there's that, so I always try to use that as like the warm up. okay, so we're going to sing together today. And some of you may not be comfortable about it, but we're going to sing together and it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Um, you know, so that, I, I was just curious too, with John Henry about you and, and your faith journey and the role that music's been a constancy and a bridge between, uh, or that common ground that's led you from one part to the other. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, th thanks for uh, <laughs> for the question. Um, and by the way, I just want to let oh, you you saw the Facebook uh, for for those people who were um, not look at the comments. Uh, Robert Rams did follow up and say that Holst rocks, and Holst was a church music director, which is interesting. To no, and he wrote a lot of music about God. Uh, so um, yes, another thing that pops up in the book with healthy music, right, was. Uh, this experience I had in college, and because this was kind of this is my faith journey, you know. But uh, and I'm writing, I'm working on my autobiography, so I hope you read it. Uh, I think you'll, I will. <laughs> you know, find a lot of uh, potentially interesting points. Uh, I, I I started out for years. I thought I was writing like a you know rock and roll uh, biography, but that's definitely not at all what I'm writing. I wrote what's what what's termed a spiritual biography in the in mm -hmm. the in the um vein of thomas merton if you're familiar with sure. thomas merton yeah oh yeah seven story mountain but yeah, he yeah. wrote that pretty young so this would be you know I'm, I'm 40 now uh but essentially this journey of finding my finding my middle path essentially mm -hmm. um going this way going that way and then finding where it is that I feel comfortable as a human being, but that it's all meaningful. And, but yeah, so part of me had to test this, test that. No, not this test that. No, not this. A lot of my life was just testing things out and realizing that's not it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, 2000 ish around there, I, I was needed some music that was more uplifting. And I found the CD in my mom's collection called 
Andreas Vollenweider, Down to the Moon. It's instrumental music. He's a Swiss harpist. I knew nothing about him. The, the, um, the album in Slip didn't say much at all. I, I was just really left to your imagination. And this music just washed over me. I was like, oh my gosh. It was exactly what I was craving. And I was hoping like, please don't go into something corny or, or that sucks after, after one minute. A lot of times you get a great intro and then it just goes into this, this beat or, and like, you know, and it ruins it. But no, this magic continued for 30 minutes without stop. And, uh, and I can still listen to it. I can't, definitely the album I've listened to the most in my life. And I listened to it today. I still don't know the names of the tracks because it doesn't even matter. That's how good the whole listen is, you know, to me. Right. Uh, so I had that experience. So I knew that there was something. And of course, I had experiences in church where I heard music was, you know, spiritually doing something to me because sure. I could compare it to listening to Metallica or Megadeth, which could also have elements of spiritual, but also a lot of just like heavy, more physical, visceral stuff, you know, Sure. that would, would generally, it, I, I could tell it wasn't universal in the sense that my mom didn't like it. My grandma right. didn't like it. So it was universal that people all across the globe at a certain age or a certain like frame mind could like it. Yeah. But so it did unite people, but not, not across um, generations so much in my experience. So right. any music that unites people across generations and cultures, I think is of the healthiest variety, you know? Of course, yeah. And uh, so this Andres Vollenweider was like that. And then, um, you know, so Handel's Messiah, things like, you know, certain masterpieces. Um, one thing, I'm not, I don't know how to directly answer the question, but one thing in the path, when, after I became a Buddhist and was practicing with the SGI, I, we would do, there would be music and uh, it, it, music appears in the SGI a lot differently than it does in, let's say the Catholic church. It's just, it's much newer organization. So it, uh, it hasn't had that time to build like that sort of solid uh, standard repertory type of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's, it's growing. It's, it's still very alive. Um, uh, anyway, <clears throat> there was at some point, uh, what we call, we got a sensei and we don't, not, not like a God figure or anything like this. He's just the person, the third president of the SGI. And he's, uh, I regard him as a mentor. Many members do, um, because he's led his life dedicated to peace, having dialogue, you know, uh, commitment to really seeing others as equals and, and to standing up against war through, through dialogue, you know, and through a peaceful means. Mm -hmm. And he's really, he, he did some amazing things. So I do regard, I appreciate his life and I see it as a model and it's not, not a model that I copy what he did, but the spirit of what, you know, he did this, this, this dialogue series is kind of inspired by him as well. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, there was a cool moment where he uh, wanted to sing um, Beethoven's Ninth, the Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, the Ode to Joy part in a Buddhist meeting and, and uh, members would to change the lyrics to something that was appropriate. And then at some point, this organization was, uh, SGI was tied to a priesthood, uh, a Buddhist priesthood. Okay. And uh, the priesthood was in an uproar about this. They didn't want to be tied to any Christian song and uh president Ikeda, this guy who i regard as a mentor said that you know music transcends all boundaries it, it's the beauty of the music that 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 we are celebrating here and, and the universality of it and that mm -hmm. we shouldn't be as because we're buddhists we shouldn't limit ourselves at all to what music we listen to uh, unless it's unless it's against the spirit of buddhism itself you know sure and this sure. music was not so that that, that was kind of a a, a beautiful moment I felt in a sense in terms of how music uh, does transcend boundaries and uh, how people can recognize that and make it yeah. a, make it a cause for peace that's good that's beautiful it, even how it mirrors what I've grown up in my adult life as understanding is the the Catholic social teaching and social justice component of kind of advocating for peace and advocating for an end to unjust war and and things like that you know i think um 
yeah that, i think that's something beautiful I, again i think that that that's one of the gifts of music is that it, it's 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 an expression of of god and and in the many ways that we as humanity see that god or experience that god that 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 that's perhaps one of could argue one of the greatest gifts um that 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 a divine creator that God has bestowed on, on all of us is this ability to, to have the healthy music that you talk about. Um, the, the music that even if you can't tell what the words are in your common tongue, like the music, that's what speaks. And that's what says, I want to tell you something about how beautiful you are, how beautiful that people all around you are, and how beautiful this life is. It's not the be all and end all. I got, I got a bigger purpose for you down the road, but like that this is just how 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 lucky we are. I think of Hamilton, like that's another, almost like that's a gorgeous album in and of itself, but how lucky we are to be alive right now when you hear a, a, a song that speaks that beauty of, of that, that transcends faith and boundaries and, and cultures and everything. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So moving along with your interview, because I don't, I don't want to run out of time uh, yeah, with yeah. the questions. Um, can you speak, of, you know, if we don't get to all the questions, it's fine. It's a great dialogue. Okay. Can you speak a bit about uh, your memories of playing drums in James Madison High School? And if Robert Rams, if you're listening, and Rebecca Wallow, Rose, this is a... Perk, perk your ears up. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was... I, I was thinking about that today of, of well, the, one of the good things was I had three years of experience, you know, drumming and, and, and being behind something of a drum set. And, and we had a drum set at home, but I couldn't play it a whole lot because it just made a lot of, a lot of noise. Um, there was, it felt like being in the music wing of Madison, um, was was like being in my aunt or uncle's house that just that's just how much at home it felt to be um and and so there was there's always <laughs> and it's interesting that mr Rams brought it up but it's you know, i'm sure every every section of 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 a, of a band of a concert band or a symphonic band especially a, a school symphonic band like uh it seemed like there was a lot of idle time for drummers because you have to get the articulations and you want to make sure every woodwind or flute section or clarinet section gets their notes just right. Um, but I think that's, that's a lot of it was like the, the discipline of uh, having conversations with the drummers and how well you could do that without disrupting everybody else um, in your section um, when the conversation was not music related. Um, I, I recall, uh, I, I remember one of my maybe not uh, strongest or the, uh, the the best versions. I always remember I, I would end up getting to school very early in the morning just because of I wanted to take a bus or two earlier on the B100 because if I didn't, it, I would either miss the bus or we'd be smushed in like sardines because of the particular line. But I remember it always being the first guy or one of the first guys in in the morning, um, and. Uh, just always wanted to, to just play the drums. Like I, I remember always having to smile. Like when I saw another, either Dave or Jason or uh, um, you know, Daniel or anybody else come in, I was like, oh, great. Hey, it's great to see you. But inside I'm like, oh, that means I got to share the drum set. <laughs> oh man. Because everybody else was, uh, you know, everybody else was part of a section, but there's only one, one drummer. And I'm like, all right, I'll play the percussion, shaky, 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 but I really want to play the drum set right now um and then uh and then not only that playing the drums in marching band was 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 pretty amazing because it was again it was almost like it's in my dna because of my mom being in uh uh drum bugle corps and uh mm -hmm. so i felt like that was something good and then when we got to do the amazing things like marching in the, the yankees parades and the ticker tape parades those are um quintessential moments in my life you know of of not many people can say that they marched in a ticker tape parade let alone because we caught a good stretch of yankees baseball and john glenn flying in outer space um you know that we were part of four of them that was that was pretty impressive 
Um, and not only that, but to be a part of, um, I stuck around the, the Allboro band probably a little later than I should have in order to play at Carnegie Hall uh, in high school, you know, so that way when, when you tell people about, you know, it's no big deal. I played in Carnegie Hall um, <laughs> and just that amazing experience of then knowing who has been on that stage. Um, okay. Yeah, I know Dave Matthews has been on there, so that was pretty cool too. Uh, but like of, of, of all these brilliant, beautiful musicians that have been there um, and what a gift and what a gift that is for students in New York City to be able to be able to do that. I know that Mr. Rams is still involved with the salute to music. Um, and, and so thank you for, for being able to continue to have that tradition of people, kids like myself having these perhaps once in a lifetime opportunities, um, you know, for, for not only for that, but for our parents and our families to like be so proud of, mm -hmm. of, of us using our gifts and talents the way that we were called to. Um, and then also playing the drums for uh, the, the school musicals and, and, uh, and, and what a gift that was. Um, even in senior year with, with, with Ms. Walla Rose of, of being uh, the student director and, and that responsibility. And that was kind of one of the first dips into um, kind of that, that leadership um, of, of like being with students and, and kind of that, that, uh, that, that leadership of playing the drums, of running around and, and doing everything. Um, and it's funny, yeah, I, I was a big fan of that Encore series on Disney Plus. Uh, and if you if you aren't familiar with it or others who would be following, it was that series that uh, Kristen Bell executive produced where they had high school classes come back to their old high schools and put on productions that they did um, 20, 30 years ago. And, uh, and I, I remember watching it and there were so many points where I was tearing up and my daughters and my wife wasn't, was looking at me like, why are you, but it was, it was hitting some of those very special moments in our lives of, mm -hmm. of, of the moments of building friendships, of recognizing things that we were good at. And, and these, it was, I was tearing up because we could never do that. We would never be able to have done that in at Madison because of the, the uh, Franken musicals that we, that we did that were amazing, but we could never get the copywriting for that uh, <laughs> nowadays. Um, and not only that, of like Mr. Littman and Mrs. Lerner not physically being there, of, the, of that sadness too, that they, all these classes had their, you know, their drama teacher, you know, wheeling themselves on out or puttering on in and, 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 and that sadness of not being able to ever have that at Madison, but the joy and the gratitude of, of that time of, of, you know, even for my parents to know that I was someplace relatively safe from the time before the sun rose to before the sun after, well, after the sun went down, because I was, I was doing music, I was doing plays and I was, you know, I was, I was sharing it, not just with my friends, but my brother, John, who's uh, two years younger than I am, was involved in that too. So to, to be able to, to pass that along to him too. Um, and yeah, Mr. Rams bringing up too about Allstate. That, that was another amazing experience too about, um, so maybe I should, I can humbly brag. I was 1999 Allstate percussion, uh, part of the, mm -hmm. the symphonic band, um, nice. wind ensemble. Um, but that was, that was another one of those pivotal, almost like what you were talking about before, John Harry, there was this moment, there's this song that was called Whatsoever Things. And, and it had this part where it was um, this, the, and towards the end of it, it, it played um, the Michigan State fight song or something, or Michigan State alma mater, which is this based on uh, the scripture passage of whatsoever. And, and I had this moment of being in rehearsal and my, the music was just, it moved me to tears because it was this moment of, of that universal language of all these people that were in the same boat as us, as myself and, and Lauren Del Rey Callahan, who was in there too that year. Um, like we all busted our tails because music was so important to us. And we were all giving our gifts to this beautiful music that we, we didn't know most of each other until we all showed up a couple of days earlier. And we played this beautiful song 
And, and it gave me chills. I, I identify that in my life when I've had those moments as moments of Holy Spirit, of, of really God being present and saying, you're where you need to be right now. Um, and, and fast forward to my, the day that Allison and I got married, and, and the second reading from our wedding mass was the whatsoever things passage. So it's like all those little breadcrumbs of life of music leading towards, you know, you know one day this is going to actually be uh, unknowingly uh, connected all together. Um, so those are some of those those memories of, of drumming and and just the joy of, uh, of freezing my tail off on Saturday mornings for less than successful football seasons, which is why it's been so neat to be down here in New Orleans and to see that the Madison Knights have had uh, a pair of successful seasons, knowing how we had less than successful seasons, but we had a lot of fun in the stands playing the Hey Song. And, uh, you know, and playing the, the Rocky theme and everything. Um, yeah. And just being able to do the different drums and play all the different instruments too. Like the, not only the drums, but um, that you and Jason were so gracious at times would let me fiddle around with your guitar, uh, of taking the guitar class with Ms. Morris, of, of getting to mm -hmm. sing with Mr. O'Hara and, and Ms. Waller Rose. And, um, you know, that they were generous with their time and their, their class time with me too. That was a lot of that as well mm -hmm. yeah no it's uh yeah when we speak of it right when you get a chance to speak of it we could see especially with a similar minded person uh we could see that we really were quite blessed in terms of the, the high school we went to yeah. amen yeah uh so there's a few more questions. We may not get to all of them. Uh, I know, which is, yeah, it's cool. I know you are a multi-instrumentalist. So what are all the instruments that you can say you play? I know you've experimented with probably lots. Yeah. Um, so if I, I was, when you, when you sh showed me that question, I, I'm going to try to frame it this way. If I'm at some place and somebody's guitar like they're sitting around but they need a guitarist i feel like i can comfortably walk up and say i can play a pretty mean rhythm guitar um i would feel a little self-conscious but even i would still feel comfortable enough to get behind a drum set and say i can give you a steady beat um in fact uh many years ago uh in my adult life and in the work i've done so i went very long story short went to madison then from madison i went to st john's university um, got very much involved with the campus ministry there, got involved with the music ministry there. And then that became out of college. I, I wanted to work in radio, but I, it didn't feel like it fit. Um, and so I entered into campus ministry and in campus ministry and music ministry, I discovered this guy named Matt Marr. Matt Marr is a Catholic Christian uh, composer, singer, songwriter, worship leader. And, and uh, his, his famous songs are Your Grace is Enough, if people know that. Um, but Matt Marr was at this Catholic underground in New York City, where it was just him playing his guitar, but there was a drum set. And I was like, I could go behind that drum set if you really needed, because I've listened to his music enough. I'm like, do I want to be that guy who said, like, do you want me to play drums with you? I can, because I know the charts, like the back of my head right now. So, so guitar and drums, I feel really confident in. I can play some substandard piano. I can clunk out some chords. Um, and if you needed some very rudimentary bass guitar, I could, I could thunk along some bass guitar. Um, I have a ukulele and a banjo sitting in my house. Um, there is a flute and a viola in my house, but not that I play it. Um, uh, Brennan learned viola in grammar school or elementary school for a couple of years. And, uh, and my wife, Allison was a flautist for, for a number of years. And she was a pretty darn good flautist too. Um, those are the instruments and a variety of auxiliary percussion uh, are all around there too. Um, I did take trumpet and baritone horn and guitar, um, and really wish I learned the cello. Maybe when I get a little older and have a little time, I'll sit down and learn the cello. Wow, so quite quite a rich uh, a rich gamut of uh, yeah musical uh, abilities and, and experiences. Yeah. So um, so I also know you're a songwriter. Or you have any you have experience writing songs? Uh, I do. So what is your writing process like? If you don't mind, yeah. sharing. 
Oh, please. I, and I, I, I know I want to make sure I chat with you about that too, um, to hear from your, your perspective of that. Um, I've, I've written songs since I was 16. Uh, so that's, you know, almost, almost 25 years. That's a little scary to say out loud and do the mm -hmm. math on. Um, my writing process, and that's something I need to do a better job on, is, is to be consistent with it. It's been more inspirational of like this moment pops up and it's like, oh, I should write a song about that. Um, it's either been inspirational or utilitarian of, um, I, I want to write a song about this, so let me write a song about it. Or especially as, as, a, a, an, uh, as an adult and as a music minister, a lot of it has been, um, we need a, I don't like this psalm. I can write a psalm. I can write a better psalm uh, for this moment. Um, so there's been a lot of that. There was uh, even an experience of, um, I've, I've been very blessed to say that I am, have won a number of songwriting contests or have been a part of songwriting contests. We were in high school with the Bertelsmann World of Expression. Um, mm -hmm. that was, that was so influential to, to what I do now, um, because of those, those, those songwriting sessions with those, those songwriters that came in was, was amazing to know that it was possible that it wasn't just, um, the guys that I was listening to or the gals that I was listening to on, on the music, like that we could do that as well. That was, that was amazing. So my song I wrote for, uh, my senior year, um, dancing on a cloud was a was a uh, was a, a, an award-winning one because of the school's uh, association with the world of expression contest and then um three years ago the city of new orleans celebrated its tricentennial and uh the archdiocese of new orleans uh who's my employer um put a contest out about writing a hymn for the tricentennial of the city um and so i said I could do, I asked the question, I asked ahead of time. So can those of us who are employees put in music? And so, and they said, yeah, sure you can. And so I did. And uh, I put, I was, I was so uh, the perfectionist or the go-getter that I am actually submitted two songs. Um, and the one that I kind of threw away uh, is, was the one that won. Uh, so it was used, it was used at a number of major uh, masses in the Archdiocese of New Orleans. One time was um, for a, a, a conference that was in town that was being hosted in New Orleans that my mom was actually a participant at. Uh, so on my birthday in St. Louis Cathedral in New Orleans, the closing song was my hymn that I wrote the lyrics to. And, and to get to hear that was, was unbelievable. Um, the first time it got played, it was, it was this January day and, and it was just this gorgeous and amazing experience to be able to, to sit and hear it. And we went next door to a restaurant um, and we're sitting and eating and all of a sudden uh, the Archbishop of New Orleans made his way upstairs with some fancy famous people. And all of a sudden I start hearing this jazz trio start playing some music and, and my ears perked up and I said, uh, that's, that's my song. Wait a second, but they're playing the song this jazz trio, and it sounded almost as, if not a little cooler, then it was amazing to hear the organ and the timpanis and choir singing it, but it was just as amazing to hear this jazz trio play the music for it, because it was almost like, um, like the Pentecost moment of like the Holy Spirit filling the world, and then people sharing the good news of like, it just started out of the church and, and made its way out of there. Um, and a lot of times with that, goes to the songwriting process of, 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 I often do it when I'm like washing dishes or like, that's the way that music comes to me. Um, I was washing my car. I was washing my wife's car as well when the words were coming to my mind. Cause I knew it was getting close to the, the deadline for the songwriting. And I'm like, -na 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 thanks be to God. And it just was like, in the course of washing the car, it was mindless enough that, uh, that all these words started popping up. Um, and so, uh, so that's kind of that, that songwriting process of there's a, there's a, uh, a thought or like there's a, a, a trigger word or a trigger uh, idea in my head that I want to be able to, to share and communicate. Um, and then it's just trying to find the right words 
and the right chorus and the right rhyme and the right structure um, and try to not make it sound too much like somebody else's music um, and, and to go from there. I don't know about, about yourself, like what's, what's helped you with your songwriting process? Well, uh, just want to comment on that real quick. Uh, congratulations. I didn't know about oh, that, that um, the songwriting victories, uh, and that must have been super cool. And the one yeah. on your birthday, man. Uh, and uh, just want to let you know, we have, well, you could see there, Juan de Jesus is a friend, uh, is an arts and music director in Brazil, Joho, Brazil. Uh, and he's uh, just letting us know that it's a pleasure to chat to all of you and uh, to be with us on our conversation. So we got about five minutes left, uh, if, if I'm right, James. Yeah, so, I, I got, um, yeah, probably about, maybe we can make it 10. We can make it 10. All right. So just real quick on my, uh, and, and then we'll jump a little bit to your philosophy. And if you can give us your three inspiring books, um, that'd be great, sure. or inspiring, whatever it is that you want to share. For me, songwriting, uh, it became the utilitarian uh, at some point. Um, I don't write songs now. Uh, I did uh, on a Catskills trip recently. I wrote a few and felt good, but I don't. I didn't. I don't feel compelled to do anything with them. I have too many. My archive is too large with things that still I want to get out into the world. And I'm, I'm right. doing a lot of writing in terms of books right now. Working on my autobiography and a book called Mind Your Music. So. Uh, but I do remember at a certain point I was putting out five, writing five songs a week, probably in early, early college, just because it was really because I like to, and, and because I, my world at that time, that was just the best way to compress. I'm learning music in college, a composition student. I'm getting frustrated here and at home or in my social life or in love. And then my friends like all this different pressures, the best thing I could do is write a song about it. <laughs> and so yeah. that I just did a lot of that. And uh, usually it would be a half hour, an hour, the song would be done. And then it would just be fleshing out from there. It would usually yeah. come in one session, occasionally two or three. Yeah, that's, that's, I, I'm, it's, it's amazing. I found when they can come out that quickly for me. Um, mine seem to take a lot more time like there's there's still a few songs that have been swirling around um that I just I, I haven't found the right missing part to it yet a lot of the the uh there's some ideas and it's and it's wild to like still sit with those ideas because some of them are from you know past relationships um and I don't like I, I've moved on in many ways but the idea is so good that i don't want to let that song go away you know yep i know what you mean yeah. uh, the songwriter's curse and blessing you know yeah yeah it's been it's uh that's good to know it's good to know yeah uh, you can always go back and polish those things sometimes you let them go but if you can't let them go sometimes they just want to they just want to be born and you don't have to do yeah. them any more than just you know, give it, give it life. I don't know. Uh, I, I did a lot of releasing archive recordings, including songs about old relationships that I just, I don't promote them, but I just want to release them. Sure. And I feel like that's kind of like being constipated and going to the bathroom. You just feel better. Yeah, it's a little bit, yeah. that's really how it is for me. So right. Sure. You know, <laughs> right. Even um, to share it with the world, you know, I, yeah, I, I, I do want, I, I do want to make sure, uh, I, I, I share that, uh, you know, your your music has had an influence on 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 my life and in my family's life because uh the your song brooklyn um every once in a while pops up into my head when i think about home uh and it's one that it's one that my my younger brother peter loves and every once in a while uh i think he pulls it up on youtube when he's in the mood to listen to it and he, he sends me a message like hey just letting you know i'm i'm listening to brooklyn so so thank you for sharing your gifts as you have uh, throughout your life, um, because it's this. Uh, this is just a way that you know some of the impact that it's had, um, in, even in my life and in my family. Uh, that, that Peter's a, a, I know I've told you that before. But Peter's a huge fan of, of, and I am of, of that song Brooklyn too. Yeah, I definitely appreciate it because uh, you know I, I regard Brooklyn as a song I'm not so proud of because I, it's kind of negative. It doesn't end on a happy note, but 
but it's some, um, but it's it was a real expression of what I was going through. So you know, I I, I like it. I I don't play it, you know, anymore. Right. But uh, it's so good to know that it resonated, and for some people, it does. It, it's it's a it's a good it's a positive thing. Yeah, even even your role of of John Fogarty of that song and how it connected uh, most recently with with your fortieth birthday and all of us that were part of that that great project that Jason did to to perform it for you and to, to, to bring it into the world the way that it did. Um, it, it was, it was really a treat, uh, partly of probably why we're talking tonight, uh, of, mm -hmm. of being, uh, introduced and exposed to that. Um, so, so thank you for, for what you've done in writing, uh, and writing your music. I appreciate it. Yeah. And then, you know, um, for anyone who hasn't seen the John Fogarty epic collab video, I'll put the link below. James is in that. And, uh, you know, it was just such a treat to have friends and people I respect uh, singing the song. Rebecca Weller-Rose was in that and, and Robert Rams and uh, Melissa Morris, uh, Sean O'Hara, and a lot of the friends, Mike Perlman, like you mentioned before, Dave yeah. Evans. Yeah. Uh, Rebecca says, thank you, John and James. Awesome interview. Yep. Well, we're coming towards the tail end of it. Thank you, Rebecca, so much for joining. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. João de Jesus. Obrigado, amigo. Uh, he, he, Juan de Jesus is a uh, director of social association that helps children and teenagers with culture, awesome. education, and arts uh, in Brazil. So it's pretty cool. We're we're reaching out over there too. Awesome. And he speaks English well too. So, um, I don't, do you have handy the questions? Because if I'd like you to pick yeah. something that you'd like to say in the last sure. few minutes. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, you know, I think. Um, really kind of that that uh that spiritual philosophy if it hasn't come clear um a lot of that catholic spirituality that i've i've matured in that i've grown in um has influenced it and and uh i was thinking about that today of of this kind of like three pieces to it that i put it in a nutshell and one is uh there's a there's a, a passage from the book of psalms which is just amazing like that there's a whole book of songs. There's like a whole hymnal within the context of the Bible. And um, I prayed with it a long time, a few years ago, that it still res resounds of that. Um, it's Psalm 104, verse 33, about all, I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to God while I live. Uh, and, and that's almost kind of uh, one piece of, of, of who I am in a nutshell. I hope that whether I'm physically using my mouth to make singing noises or um using my hands and my feet to make music um that it's that it's all done to praise the god who created me and put these gifts inside of me um and to connect with others and and also there's the the gospel passage of uh, the disciples going on the road to emmaus uh of 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 the beauty that comes with encountering and accompanying um god the Lord, our divine creator. Um, I was even thinking about how wild it is like that. That's accompaniment that we talk about in young adult ministry, which is a lot of what I do nowadays. Um, it's, it's such a big buzzword right now, but as musicians, we're familiar with accompaniment because we have accompaniment parts all the time and, and how we accompany a leader or we accompany the lead vocalist or whatever. Uh, and, and from a spirituality sense, like we accompany along with the leader who is our, our God or our divine creator. Um, so being alongside and accompanying others in that direction uh, is kind of something that's a guiding principle. Um, and the idea of, of, of sacrament, of, of things that we see having deeper meaning to them, of, 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 and, and it also communicating God's love to us. Um, you know, that, that kind of, that, that there are, there are the big fancy actions, the important actions that, that a church does that is sacrament, but there's also, uh, the ways and the, the items and the actions in our world that are sacramental, that communicate divine love, um, and music very much does that. Um, I think that that kind of puts that all in a nutshell of using my life to, praise God, our divine creator, through song and through music, um, helping accompany other people in that direction so that they can understand God's love through me, if I'm lucky enough to be that instrument, um, 
and, and that, that we can understand and share that love with one another um, to make this world a better place. Um, uh, yeah, no, very well said, thank you. Uh, I do feel that, um, you know, essentially the, the heart of Buddhism is that uh, we're all allies in this yeah. uh, journey of being human together. And that uh, you know, world peace will not be achieved un unless we, at the Buddhist perspective, unless we as Buddhists recognize our role to harmonize. It's it's our responsibility to harmonize with all the people in the world. Yeah. And um, yeah, so praising the uh, our common humanity, the glory of the universe, as I as I might put it, yeah. uh, and. Uh, you clearly, you know, we're really pretty much on a very similar mission to uh, uplift and inspire our fellow humans, our fellow brothers right. and sisters, Amen. and enjoy it while we're at yeah. it too, right? Yeah, Why not? <laughs> yeah. Because there's, I, I feel like that's harmony is just that. Like I love, I, I've loved trying to find where the good harmonies are in music. Mm -hmm. um, of, of when I'm at a concert, especially like a Dave Matthews Band concert, I'm normally not singing the lead vocal i'm trying to sing the harmonies along because like dave matthews has got the vocals down i want to be accompanying him i want to be like adding that extra layer of a note or, or or a thing there um that that fleshes it out even more um and and i think like that harmony is just a communication with with god or with the universe like that's that it's 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 finding that balance or that peace or that 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 connection um you know of of tuning in on the right frequencies uh, and and in that we something is revealed to us when we when when a good harmony when i hear that in the good harmony in a, in a song in a uh in in a, in a line of music or a, a piece of music um that's really there yeah, man. We, we can go on and on. It's been so much yeah. fun, James. Hey, I yeah. want to respect your time. Thank you. Yeah, I got to go put my girl. It's school. Like, it's crazy to think y'all aren't experiencing it at home in, in New York, but it's a school night for my daughter. So I have to, uh, she starts school this week. Uh, hmm. uh, so so those of you who live in New York, appreciate that you still have another month because it's it's the start of the school year here in, in New Orleans. Um, wow. And if, you, if anybody wants to continue the conversation, they can with me at James Behan just money on instagram or on facebook cool. um i am part of a dave matthews band fan competition song competition that, that my buddy and i are doing called at dm bracket so the dmb dave matthews band and bracket um so if you want to join in on that we're more than happy to join us we'd love to have other folks join us and uh and thank you again john henry uh, if you ever wanted me to do a part two if you invite people back for part two i'd be more than happy to keep conversing with you about about this about everything yeah I think that that could be in the cards for us and uh, a little bit, a little bit later in the year, maybe, or we'll see yeah. whenever that yeah, yeah. works out for us. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be great, man. Yeah. And thanks to everybody who was commenting as well. Uh, especially mm -hmm. our, our Miss Morris. And our Ms. Casey, yeah. Mr. Melissa Ms. Morris. Ms. Thank you for yeah. joining and Miss Rebecca and Walla Rose and Robert Rams and any other friends who were there. Thank you very much. Jimmy. Thank you too. Yeah. It's been great to, 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 Take a little trip down memory lane with you, John Henry, and hopefully we'll get to do that again real soon. Yep, that'd be great. Uh, all the best with the family. Have a thanks, great night, James. Same to you. Thank all right, you. Take thanks, care. everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.